Hello viewers, in this video we are going to discuss about the Nama Basalis in three parts. The first part is the anterior part, whereas the middle part is the second part and the posterior part is the third part. These three parts will be dealt by my colleague Dr. Aparna Muralidharan. Over to her. Hello students. Today let us learn Norma Basalis. So as you can see here, this is the inferior view of the skull or the base of skull. First let us see the boundaries. The base of skull is bounded anteriorly by the alveolar arch on either sides by the zygomatic arches and the mastoid process, posteriorly by the external occipital protuberance and the superior nuchal line. For convenience in describing the features, the base of skull is divided into three parts by two imaginary lines. The first imaginary line is drawn at the posterior end of the hard palate and the second imaginary line is drawn at the anterior edge of foramen magnum. Thus we have an anterior one-third, middle one-third and a posterior one-third for the base of skull. So first let us see the features in the anterior one-third of the base of skull. So the most prominent feature that you can see in the anterior one-third of base of skull is the alveolar arch. This alveolar arch bears sockets for the upper set of teeth. This alveolar arch is part of a bone forming the upper jaw. This bone is called as maxilla. So this is how the maxillae of both the sides unite in the midline to complete the horseshoe shaped alveolar arch. You can also see another bony projection from the maxilla that forms a projection called as hard palate. So the next important feature that you can see in the anterior part of the base of the skull is this structure. This is called as hard palate. Hard palate is formed by two bones on each side. The major part of the hard palate that is the anterior two-third of hard palate is formed by what you have already seen that is called as the palatine process of the maxilla. The posterior one-third is formed by an L-shaped bone whose horizontal plate that is horizontal plate of the palatine bone forms the posterior one-third of the hard palate. Now in the hard palate when the two maxillae unite there is an intermaxillary suture when the two palatine bone unites, there is an interpalatine suture. And when the maxilla and palatine bone unites, there is a palatomaxillary suture. So these four sutures meet in the midline to form the cruciform suture. What are the features in the hard palate that you can see? As you can see when you observe very closely, there are some very deep depressions on the surface of hard palate. These are the depression for the palatine glands. Now let us see the features in the hard palate from behind forwards. If you see the midline of the hard palate, you can see a small triangular projection. This triangular projection is called as posterior nasal spine. It gives attachment to a muscle in the uvula of your soft palate called as musculus uvulae. Parallel to and little in front of the posterior border of hard palate, you can see a raised elevation. This is called as the palatine crest that gives attachment to the palatine aponeurosis. A little in front of the palatine aponeurosis, you can see two openings on either side. So this large opening is called as the greater palatine foramen that transmits the greater palatine nerve and vessels. Behind the greater palatine foramen, in the pyramidal process of the palatine bone, you can see one to three openings on each side. This is called as the lesser palatine foramen, foramina that transmits the letter lesser palatine nerve and vessels. If you trace from the greater palatine foramen forwards, you can see a groove that transmits the greater palatine nerve and vessels and this groove terminates anteriorly in the midline of the hard palate in a depression called as the incisive fossa. 
If you look very carefully in the incisive fossa, it will contain two foramina, the right and left incisive foramina or in rare cases it will be seen as anterior and posterior incisive foramina that transmits nerves and vessels from the oral cavity to the nasal cavity and vice versa. The small triangular piece of bone in the anterior part of the heart palate this triangular piece of bone with the apex as the incisive fossa and the base formed by the four incisor tooth is called as the premaxilla, the development of which will be taught in development of palate. Thank you.